Hey everyone, Tim the Collect Jurassic, and I have an awesome new Mattel Jurassic World toy unboxing today. I have the new Dino Trackers Camouflage and Battle and Dominus Rex. I have been waiting for this one. Probably one of the coolest figures to come out this year. As you can see, this is an all new Indominus Rex figure, not something we've gotten previously from Mattel. It's an all new sculpt, all new action features, all that cool stuff. If you've been tuned into my channel, you saw me do a little video preview of it a couple months ago, but now I have the figure in hand. Uh, in the flesh, it looks even better, and I cannot wait to unbox it, review it. I'm going to do lots of comparisons to the other Indominus Rex figure, other big figures, so we can get an idea of just uh, kind of the size around this thing. And of course, we'll do all the demos of the awesome features it has too. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, this is the Camouflage and Battle Indominus Rex. It's part of the 2023 Dino Trackers line here. Um, Dino Trackers meaning that it's going to have that sort of like uh, biome theming where we have the little... You see this little mountain over here. So every figure this year sort of has an uh, ascribed uh, sort of locale or environment. They're giving Indominus Rex here the mountain. So that means the background behind the figure, which you can't really see, um, shows that, uh, you know, a, a sort of a forested mountain area too. So you got the Dino Trackers logo, the Jurassic World logo. Blue and Beta, all that good stuff. Pretty standard on all the Dino Trackers packaging. We also have on top that the figure has lights and sounds, which of course we'll get to later. Then a little preview of those lights and sounds as well as how you can do the action features with the tail and the button. And they also show here the other available um, sort of similarly sized figure, which is the T-Rex, which I do not have yet, but I cannot wait to get my hands on. But let's go ahead and pop this one out and take a look at it um because that's where the fun begins right so i'll go ahead and snip snip up here got it out we're probably yeah we're gonna have some pegs down here to take out for the uh the feet itself there'll be instructions too which i'm not as concerned about getting out here because i don't think i'm gonna need those let me just make sure i'm turning this the right way i think you can actually turn them either way yep and this one should I always have trouble with one of these every time. One of them will pop right out. It looks like they're both gonna pop right out for me though, which is fortuitous. And then we can sort of get these feet positioned. They always make the feet so they can fit in the packaging, of course. And then we'll go ahead and set the box. I don't think there's anything else in the box. There's no tracking gear with this one. Like some of the figures have this here. Let me just make sure I got the foot rotated out yeah i think that's how you do it so there is the camouflage and battle and dominus rex um freed out of the box you can see this is just you know before i go in on the details this is just a really really cool um silhouette of the indominus it's much leaner than the previous figures we've gotten the detail on the head is a little crisper a little sharper you don't have this big massive oversized head and it has you know sparing paint details too in terms of it's gray right it's got a uh, darker gray finish on top. It's got uh, a lighter gray to the rest of the body. They did go ahead and paint those toe claws, which I appreciate. Um, they did not paint the hand claws, which I don't think they've done on any of the previous versions either. So um, no huge issue there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it definitely has a minimal paint job, but the uh, figure itself, or the, sorry, the dinosaur itself from Jurassic World really doesn't have a whole lot going on in terms of color either. Um, but yeah, just a really solid looking figure just from the looks of it. And then detail wise, let's go ahead and get in here, get up close and personal. Of course you have the really nice um, scaling on the feet, all that good stuff. You also have, um, you know, pebbly textures on the, the feet, on the um, hips rather, these big giant bumps, lots of like little scales and spikes along the whole body, which I'm guessing is pretty consistent with the animal overall in the film. The hands, look at those hands out here. You can see it's got the big giant sort of like opposable thumb along with the other claws on both hands looking really nice. Um, and then it's got uh, some quills on the back that are actually made of a separate plastic. It's almost pearlescent. It's kind of cool. It's kind of like pinky almost. Um, but uh, those are made of a different softer plastic. So they're a little bit more, I guess, malleable. They can't be posed, but it just means that they're a little softer to the touch and, and they probably won't bang up as much um, if they were just like painted hard plastic. Then the face, I mean, that's where this thing really shines. Let me see if I can pose it down to the camera a little bit better. I mean, look at that awesome face. It's got the big giant cavities that have the darker color gray on them on both sides. We open up this thing's mouth and we'll see that it's got a nice painted uh, interior plastic uh, upper and lower mouth with a big shiny tongue with 
lots of glistening detail on it. And the teeth, I just love on this thing because they're not painted teeth. Mattel quit, uh, kind of quit doing painted teeth on these bigger figures, which I am so grateful for because that painted teeth is just so prone to rubbing. It's even hard to find a figure right out of the box that doesn't already have paint rub on the teeth. But these, uh, these teeth are actually cast pla or casted plastic that are just kind of fit underneath, um, kind of where the roof of the mouth is and the top of the head same thing with the bottom and they're just rubbery they're a little bit bendier too so they can kind of take a little bit of abuse when it's biting things but the main point is they don't rub um they don't have any paint rub so i love that they did it on the super colossal figures too so really nice stuff got the little red eye there too um looking very menacing on both sides nice detail around the eye too with the little folds of skin and stuff so i uh, just a really really cool looking um uh, version of Indominus just uh, as a static figure. But let's go ahead and talk about articulation, action features, and then, of course, I want to dive into some comparisons to the other figures. So you saw me playing a little bit with articulation on the arms. I'm happy to report the arms are completely articulated. The, um, they have a nice, smooth uh, rotation on them. Almost looks like a hinged rotating joint, so they can go out, they can go in, they can go all the way around. They have full range motion, so we can do all kinds of things without kind of being worried about an action feature. And then it also has the same thing on the elbows where they have a full range of motion and they go up and down as far as, and rotate as well. So you can do, you know, all kinds of cool stuff and all kinds of cool poses, which I definitely appreciate. It gives a little more dynamic look on the shelf. And also if I'm gonna be doing some toy photography um, and for all the toy photographers out there, you're gonna have a little bit more freedom um, playing with these arms. So. Uh, it looks awesome, and one of the cool things about Indominus Rex has always been those big kind of menacing arms. I did notice it has some sculpted quills here. It would have been cool if they added, like, these softer quills down here, too, just to give it a little bit more pizzazz, but um, they did do a little sculpt, at least, so there's something. And then articulation on the legs, we have independent articulation on each leg, which is great. You know, sometimes they make figures that are tied it's one hinge, but this one is completely independent. So you can do, you know, you're running, you can do, um, oh, whoa, previewing the action feature there. Um, you can see, oh, that's so cool. So we'll get to that in a second. It looks awesome though. Um, but you can um, pose, pose Indominus here uh, up and proper as opposed to down or down or even like a, let's see how far we can get it to bend down. It uh, looks like that's about as far as it'll bend down. I'm sure I could force the leg. Uh, it's really this leg that's hanging up on the body. And I'm sure that I could force it a little bit more, but I would prefer not to do that with my brand new toy. So no forcing today, but I'm sure if you wanted to, you could get this thing um, e dipping even lower because you can see how low this leg goes really low. So um, something that I could play with off camera to make sure I'm not going to hurt anything. Um, yeah, that basically is all the basic articulation. Everything else is going to be tied to that really cool action feature, which we can go ahead and play with. Um, the first part of it is going to be the tail doing a rotating tail. Causes the, uh, the head to do a pretty wide rotation range. Um, no sound effects or lights activated with that. It's kind of just meant to... It's cool. You can do it really slow and make make um, Indominus kind of look around quizzically, which is cool. Um, but then if you pair it with the action feature, it's going to do even cooler stuff. So the action feature is activated by this little hidden button on the tail and pressing that button does a uh, roaring effect. Then you see that light, that green light inside too which is a little hard to see with my studio lighting here. I mean, you get an idea of it, but um, I'll go ahead and dim the lights here in a second. Then we can really take a look at it, but you can hear some nice roars. Lots of nice roars. So a lot of different roars. And I do want to comment too, how smooth this action feature is. This button, I mean, it, sometimes you know you press buttons on these toys and it feels a little bit creaky or a little bit loose. This is very smooth. It's one of the smoother action features I've played with on a, on a you know, chomping dinosaur. I know I always talk about the Jurassic World Dominion toys having a really smooth action feature with the push down act action. This is right in line with that in terms of like smoothness and feeling like you're never gonna break it. Just really, really tight and snappy. You can see how those teeth 
snap it shut too. So um, that's just the action feature again um, with bright lights on. But let's go ahead and dim the lights and take a look at what that looks like. All right, hopefully this is uh, suitably dimmer, um, right? Uh, and you're able to kind of appreciate the lighting feature without putting us completely in pitch black here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that button again and we're gonna take a look at what this looks like in the dimmer lighting. So you can see that green really pulsating through the body, flickering around. You can also get an appreciation of how they've sculpted the plastic inside so that it's not just you're seeing screws and beams where they sealed the plastic, but you're actually seeing like texture inside the body um, kind of like how the figure would actually or the dinosaur would actually look um, camouflaging against some leaves sort of a jungly palm leaf uh, effect and it glows really brightly and I love how it um, kind of like flickers and pulsates too reminds me of the new epic attack lighting that does some really cool stuff too not just on or off or blinking but sort of a pulsing flickering sort of idea so I also love how it stays on for a little while and goes back and forth. It just looks really, really cool. Um, I love it. And you can definitely get a better appreciation of it in the dark. But I, I mean, on camera, I know maybe it doesn't show up a lot when the lights are all the way on, but I can tell you in person that it actually looks quite, it's quite apparent even with all the lights on. But of course you're going to get a um, you know more impressive effect the lower your lights are. That looks really, really cool. Um, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, just again, a close up on sort of that pattern inside. You get an idea of uh, just all those little segmentations. I mean, it kind of looks like jungle leaves to me, which is, uh, you know, appropriate being that this is supposed to be camouflaging, you know, against the jungle. So appropriately named Camouflage and Battle Indominus Rex there. All right, now that we're back with the lights completely on, let's go ahead and move on to some comparisons. I know everyone's probably dying to know what this thing looks like um, next to the other Indominus figure, which I will get that one out of the way first, but I have plenty of others in store. This would be the very first Indominus Rex figure that Mattel gave us back in 2019. Um, I believe it's called the, uh, let me see, it's uh, maybe like the Destroy and Devour Indominus. That sounds right. I'm sorry. I should I should know that off the top of my head. I shouldn't, actually. That would be ridiculous to know every single figure off the top of my head. But I believe it's something like Destroy and Devour. Hopefully I have that right. But definitely let me know in the comments if I don't. But uh, this was an awesome figure when it came out. Definitely the best Indominus Rex figure we had to date when you count uh, the monstrosities that, uh, that Hasbro gave us. Um, it had a pretty cool action feature in that it um, actually swallowed figures whole down its throat. Um, and then they would glow inside. It also had this cool action feature where it would like grab figures too. And it had nice posability there too. I don't think it had independently posed legs. They, well, maybe it did. I don't know. Um, no, they kind of want to pose together because they had this also, this, this feature where it would like swallow things and move its head up and stuff or move its head down and... You can also see its throat glowing, which is always kind of weird because just the throat glowed. Um, but you know, it was for the time, it was an awesome figure. Um, and this new one, you can see right off the bat, is already looking a little bit more movie accurate in terms of proportions, right? The head in, is much more lean. The neck is definitely way smaller. But overall, the Indominus, the new Indominus we have is, is, is a smaller figure. There's no getting around it. It's objectively uh, a smaller figure. In terms of paint and all that, this one feels a little bit uh, medium gray versus this one's very light gray. Still have the painted toenails, unpainted claw nails, so nothing big there. Uh, Detail-wise, I think this one has just as much detail packed in. Again, it's just those sort of strange proportions it has for action features that don't quite fit, and then sort of like, you know, it kind of always had a short tail too versus this guy that has a little bit of a longer tail. So proportionally, this one's definitely winning, but um, size-wise, it's definitely a significantly smaller, um, you know, head for sure. If you can get a, an idea of the heads there. Let me see if I can hold them up there. Um, I mean, look how far back this one's head goes compared to this one before you get to the neck. You can see the quills there. That's just a much, much beefier figure. Lengthwise, they're actually the exact same length. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. Um, the tails on the old ones kind of flicking back, making it look smaller, but they're actually the exact same size length um, and arguably sort of the same height. Uh, maybe the older ones just a little bit taller, 
but um, you know, it's a it's a bigger figure, just that's beefier and all that stuff, versus the new one. But I like the new one's uh, proportions much better, so it's kind of a trade off there. So definitely way 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 smaller head, but um, a more accurate head, more accurate proportions, all that stuff. Um, but there's a nice side by side, so you can get an idea of just how much bigger the head on the new one is, or the head on the old one is compared to the smaller head on the new one. But otherwise, um, you know, uh, other body proportions, it seems to be basically the same size figure in terms of, uh, you know, actual measurements. But again, the old one's going to be just a little bit beefier. So that's the Destroying Devourer Indominus next to that. Uh, that new camouflage and battle Indominus. I think it's a clear upgrade here in terms of paint, in terms of detail, in terms of uh, action features, in terms of really everything that matters. Um, but some might have some concerns over the smaller size, right? So let's go ahead and see how this thing stacks up against humans, stacks up against other dinosaurs. First up, we're gonna do a human. We're gonna bring in the awesome new vehicle that we have from Dino Trackers that really just goes right along with this toy as far as I'm concerned in terms of that Jurassic World era and this really cool unique film via or not film vehicle but a, a vehicle that you might as well have seen on film um, coming in here and I'm gonna go ahead and pop this guy out best I can all right he's popped out uh, and we can see you know how he scales up next to the Indominus here, which I think he scales up really, really nicely. The figure's the the figure's still huge. It still looks like a super predator next to him. He probably goes uh, a little bit below its knee um, in terms of height. Um, next to the head, it's it's you know going to be able to uh, eat him just fine. Is it as big as the other one in terms of ability to swallow? No, but it's still big enough to be um, sort of. Uh, imposing and kind of large, larger size like the uh, like the film dinosaur there. So I think it goes really nicely and it looks really cool next to this truck too. I love that. I'm gonna have to definitely grab some photos later of uh, of it facing off against this this vehicle. So that's where it, how it stacks up against a human, pretty much how you would expect, um, more or less. So we'll go ahead and get that off screen. Let's go ahead and bring in our first uh, contender, which I'm going to bring in the new. Endoraptor, the Dino Tracker's Endoraptor. Um, the Endoraptor actually looks really big next to it, but that's because this Endoraptor is a huge figure. I mean, it's definitely probably not it's supposed to even be in scale with what we see on screen in the film. It's just a large figure. I guess I could bring the human back just to show you just how massive <laughs> this guy is. Um, I don't remember it being that big in the film in terms of like the size of its head next to a human. So this guy's just a little bit erroneously large anyway um, for what it's worth, but also a really cool figure. I love the electronic eye. I don't usually go, after, go for that stuff, but it looks really slick on this guy. So that's him next to the uh, Indoraptor there. Let's go ahead and bring in a uh, another film predator that isn't the T-Rex. Of course, Jurassic World Dominion's Giganotosaurus. Um, I know there's a lot of hate for this figure. It doesn't stand straight ever. You kind of have to pose it a certain way to get it. It's looking sort of like it's sitting straight or uh, looking straight, but you're never going to get it. It's always going to have that twisted body. Oh no, my endo endoraptor's falling over. We'll move him over and we'll just focus on these two for now. Um, but one thing I, I think that's interesting is, you know, everyone said this endoraptor felt a little bit small. Um, its head was a little bit small, but really when you bring it next to this, Indominus, it's almost like there's a um, a new scale being being achieved by Mattel for a lot of these bigger feature figures where they've kind of condensed things and made them a little more detailed, but they're not quite as big and bulky as the figures we've been getting. Now, what that means is you put them next to some of the older T-Rexes and they look small, but really when you get the humans involved, they still look more or less appropriately bigger, uh, appropriately sized, I should say, but the Giga still feels a little on the small side. Um, in terms of what we saw on screen Dominion. But next to the uh, Indominus Rex here, it actually looks really, really nice. Um, they have very similarly sized heads for sure. Um, they have the same rubber teeth effect. So these two actually scale together really, really nicely. Um, and as far as Dominion toys go, we also have the Dominion T-Rex here. I'm gonna get this guy off the table. If I keep all these figures on the table, I'm not gonna have any room to do anything. 
Here is the, uh, I think this is called the Thrash and Devourer T-Rex, which means that uh, that I was calling that other Indominus wrong, probably the wrong name, but that's okay. Um, the Thrash and Devourer T-Rex here, uh, you can see scale-wise, um, pretty consistent. Um, Size-wise, length-wise, it's actually a little bit stubbier than the Indominus. It's tail, well, I guess they're basically the same length there. Um, same height, all that stuff, obviously meant to be the same scale. This T-Rex is a lot beefier around the middle, much wider body, and a huge massive head. Probably one of the biggest heads on any of the Mattel T-Rexes for the Coraline. So it's definitely way bigger than the Indominus head in terms of width. In terms of actual like silhouette, it also is a much bigger head. Um, you know, I think in the movie, Indominus was meant to be bigger than the T-Rex, so this guy's definitely starting to feel a little bit smaller next to some of these core figures, um, where he looked fine next to Giga, more or less, um, which I think means, means he's probably more appropriately sized for a different size T-Rex than, uh, maybe the Dominion one. I do have the Hammond Collection Rex, which I know some people out there will, will appreciate the comparison here. I think it's kind of apples to oranges. They're not really the same toy line, so why compare them? But I'm gonna do it just for people out, people out there that ask. Um, it scales pretty nicely to this. Again, the Hammond Collection T-Rex feels a little bit bigger than the and the Indominus, which probably isn't movie accurate. The Indominus should be bigger, but they have very similarly sized heads, probably almost identically sized heads. Um, so they scale nicely there. Um, obviously you can see the uh, Hammond Collection T-Rex is a much longer figure, as it should be, it has the, accurate sizing doesn't isn't constrained by smaller tails that have to be wedged into packaging it has a detachable tail so it's a definitely a longer figure um, but not a taller figure and the head size is definitely not um you know dwarfing the indominus by any means and then lastly what i think is more appropriate size for this is one of these sort of featureless um these featureless T-Rex figures that Mattel gives us. There's a million of these guys. They have lots of different names. Epic Chomp. Uh, this one's a, a Extreme Damage version. There's all different kinds. Um, but I would say this T-Rex scales the best um, with this version of Indominus because you can see that, you know, the, the heads are, you know, basically the same size, but the Indominus head is just a little bit bigger than the T-Rex put them next to each other. The Indominus is just a little bit taller. Um, and uh, I mean, I guess lengthwise, the Indominus is much, much, much longer um, than the T-Rex, but they just seem like they're a little bit more suited for a film accurate showdown in terms of one size versus the other. So I'm, I guess what I'm saying is the big takeaway here is this Indominus is a little bit smaller than what you'd think. Um, but if you pair it with the right figures, it's definitely going to look, um, suitably massive the way it's supposed to, and you get a human involved in there and it looks just fine too. Um, again, it's, it's smaller, but the trade-off here is we're getting really nice proportions and, and really nice compact details along with those really cool action features. So I'll do one more big roundup comparison, just so you can see all the different sizes. I won't be bringing the Hammond Collection Rex back onto this one just because, but we'll get both the Dominion Rexes on there and we'll also get the Giga on there. So you can see how it compares to all of these sort of latest Super Predator figures. Um, fits in pretty nicely. Again, just a little bit more. If you're trying to make it dwarf the other dinosaurs, this scale T-Rex is going to be a little bit better. So, but I think with the Giga, it basically lines up. So pretty cool. Um, again, there's trade-offs with the size, but I think you can probably find a pretty agreeable comparison with um, a, a, a figure you probably already own in terms of the T-Rex. So yeah, this thing is such a beauty. I did want to mention before I wrap this up it does have a scan tag that's embedded in its leg that's definitely a negative point on it for me i wish that you could just pull it out the back like the rest of them but i'm guessing that was all tied up with the action feature um so it just pops down there you can see the scan tag um you can see the little jurassic park or jurassic t-rex symbol in there um but otherwise yeah it just pops back in it's a huge tag too wow um but it pops back in it's definitely 
pretty noticeable, um, but you know, you can always show the figure from this side if it really bothers you. It doesn't really bother me. I'm, I'm kind of used to those. These are kids toys. They do have those action features. I'm here for the uh, enhanced detail and proportions. That's what excites me and this kind of stuff I can, I can learn to forget about personally. So, um, but yeah, I mean, this thing is just really, really cool looking in person. I hope I'm conveying that on camera. It's got awesome action features, really cool lighting effect inside. And, uh, you know, doesn't have a lot of paint on it, but what it does use, what it does have, it uses very effectively to make something a little more, oh, I like that. I like that little roar it did, but all in all, to make something a little bit more impressive than the uh, Indominus figure we already got, right? I mean, this used to be the coolest thing ever, and then you put it next to this new one, and it suddenly looks a little dopey and uh, kind of misshapen, so... Mattel's always improving, which I appreciate. And this new Indominus is a testament to that. And for all those people out there who are hopeful for one day getting a Hammond Collection Indominus, I'd say if they use this as a base and added articulation, we'd be in a great spot for that. So really, really cool stuff. Again, this is the Mattel Jurassic World Camouflage and Battle dino trackers whoo mouthful and dominus rex so a lot of things to track down there but if you want to grab this one for yourself head to collectjurassic.com i have all the shop links you can order this one for yourself really really cool figure highly recommend but i think that's all i got for this review again i'm to collect jurassic thanks for watching and i'll see you next time